wastage and food packaging, then a really good place to start is inside the average Australian's shopping trolley. Ben earlier let me look inside his trolley, and I've got to say it looked pretty healthy. There was a whole heap of organic fruit and vegetables, uh, some organic meats, bread, cheese, a bit of milk, and a bit of chocolate. It's pretty much what I eat each week. But the problem is the whole lot was wrapped in plastic. We counted 26 pieces of plastic in there. Now, if you extrapolate that out over a year, we're talking a thousand pieces of plastic. In Australia, the population's 23 million people. You're talking tens of billions of pieces of plastic every year that's just thrown out. Now, I honestly think we can do better than that. This image um, tells the story of plastic pollution better than any other. It's a juvenile lace and albatross that was born on Midway Atoll in the northwest Hawaiian Islands. And people often look at this image and think it's been photoshopped, but it's real. And what's most heartbreaking is that all the plastic we see here was actually fed to this bird by its adults who forage over the open ocean looking for food. And they're mistaking all these items for food. So. Seeing this in 2009, I just said to myself, this is what we're doing as custodians of our planet, and I've got to do something. You often think about, you know, when plastic gets into our oceans and waterways, that that's the end of the story, but it continues. Anything that floats will not just go away, it'll go out to our open oceans where it can circulate on things known as gyres, and this is an example of what these gyres look like. This is the big island of Hawaii, a beach called Camillo Beach and all the debris that you can see here actually came from countries like North America or in countries in Asia and it travelled there thousands of kilometres to get to this beach so that's what the Great Pacific Garbage Patch looks like and it really is a, uh, a blight that humans should be pretty ashamed of. In nature there's no such thing as waste. Everything gets returned back to the system. If we want to get serious about sustainability, it starts with waste. Port Phillip Eco Centre is a community managed environment centre and not for profit organisation and we're located here in the beautiful St Kilda Botanical Gardens. Just to give you a, a picture of what the waste stream looks like in the city of Port Phillip, uh, in 2009-2010 uh, the local council collected through curbside collections about 34,000 tonnes of uh, waste in total and around 20,000 was sent to landfill and uh, 14,000 approximately tonnes were uh, recyclable material. The trends show that the um, amount of recyclables that people are processing through curbside collection is, in, it is nudging up slowly, so it's nudged up about 5% somewhere between 2005-2010. But uh, the other trend that Council has reported is that the overall volume of waste that's being collected is uh, in increasing exponentially as well. So even though we're doing a lot better at recycling, on the whole we're, st we're still producing an awful lot of waste. And uh, in fact, uh, I came across a statistic that um, the average Port Phillip household produces about 50 kilograms a year more waste uh, than 10 years ago. We're wasting over $8 billion worth of food every single year in Australia. So that's over $1,000 for every single household. Most of that food goes to landfill where it rots and creates CO2 emissions. And at the same time, there's nearly 2 million Australians who don't have enough food to feed themselves and their families, and they have to resort to emergency food relief programs. At Second Bite, we don't think this makes any sense. So what we do is we rescue some of that fresh, perfectly edible food that would otherwise go to waste and we redistribute it to over 1,000 community food programs across the whole of Australia. 
there it's converted into healthy, nutritious meals and meal hampers for people in need. Well, Spain and Barrow was started because I spent some time at Second Bite as the founding CEO for seven years. And one of the sectors that we approached was the farming community and asked them if they had any produce that they were able to donate. And the common answer was that these farmers were doing it incredibly tough and actually were almost at the point of needing food relief themselves as opposed to being food providers. And I realised that something was very, very wrong with the food system. And so we decided to start up a social business, which is a wholesale food business with an entirely new way of doing business. We work directly with farmers and we buy their produce at a fair farm gate price in all shapes and sizes. And we bring that into commercial kitchens, such as cafes, restaurants, some hospitals and schools and childcare centres and a whole variety of people that purchase this produce. Supermarkets and the wholesale market demands fruit that looks perfect because that's what consumers believe. Well, that's what consumers have been educated to, to look for. And so the, the fruit that's not quite perfect, it may have a mark on the skin, it may have some other imperfection, it's still perfectly good fruit, it's the same fruit on the inside. And so what, what is happening with Spade and Barrow, it gives us the opportunity to, to move that imperfect fruit. Here in Harcourt we've had uh, a number of growers leave the industry in the last few years and, and it's happening more and more because they're, they're finding that it's becoming uneconomic. The, the, the first grade fruit moves fine but the lesser grade fruit is very hard to move. It's incredible to think that Australian households are wasting around a thousand dollars worth of food every year and when I think about it the key behind that is that we've been sold a culture of convenience. We're marketed this ideal that we can just get anything we want, any time we want. And that is the source of the problem. I think it's really important to ask ourselves why we're wasting so much food. I think it's because we literally, we take it for granted. I think we've lost touch with the provenance of our food um, and lost touch with the amount of resources that actually go into producing it. So we've got this impression that there's this abundance of beautiful looking food on the, uh, on, on the shelves in the, in the shops. And, and it's difficult to think about how much water and land, uh, the energy, the resources that go into producing that food. Um, and so we don't, uh, we don't value it as much as we should. I think in Australia we waste so much food, um, about eight billion dollars worth every year, because A, we are buying and purchasing our produce with our eyes, not our taste buds, which is what we should be purchasing our produce through, what does it taste like? And secondly, I think we've really lost touch with the people that grow our food. And that's why Spain and Barrow is all about shortening that supply chain so that we can actually put the consumer back in touch with the farmer who actually grew their food in the first place. We need a newfound respect for the food that is grown in this country. There is no need for imports at all. This is such a bountiful country with such an amazing array of produce that we can stay within our borders and we can be absolutely satisfied with the produce, produce that's grown here. Now our grandparents lived in an era when they simply couldn't afford to waste food. They used the bones to make stocks, they used the dripping to spread on toast and that's what I saw my grandfather doing when I was a little kid. Today of course we feel like we don't have the time, we simply just don't know how to use up our leftovers. But using up every last bit of food is actually really simple when you know how. It also saves heaps of money and heaps of time which is why I do it. It creates incredible flow in your week. So I'll get home from my shopping and I'll cook up all my vegetables in one hit. I steam them to about 70%, I let them cool and I put them in a Ziploc bag and store them in the freezer. So I'll put some broccoli, some partly frozen broccoli into my green smoothie in the mornings or I'll throw it into a casserole or I put it in my lunchbox and add it to a salad once I get into work uh, for lunch that day. My beetroot leaves, I will steam them up and eat them like silver beet or I make a soup out of them. And then any off cuts, I actually put into one bag and I place it all together with some herbs, any kind of leftover bits of onion skin. I put it in the freezer and when I'm ready to make a stock using some leftover bones, I put it all in together and it actually extends my kind of nutrient level even further.
One of the simplest ways that anyone can start to reduce food waste is through their shopping. If you buy with intent, then you avoid all the marketing hype and the impulse. And you start to plan your food so that if you plan your meals, then you actually use what you have when it's fresh and when it's in season. Once you've separated your food waste, you're halfway there. You've actually become a waste warrior. And you'll notice that your waste bin will reduce and it won't smell because that beautiful resource, that food resource, can now start its journey into becoming a rich compost to put back onto the garden and grow your next lot of vegetables. Growing your own food helps reduce packaging because at the end of the day, nature provides produce with its own packaging. And most of the packaging that surrounds our food these days is because of transport. When we grow our own food, we're growing it right near where we live, close to our kitchen. So there's no food miles, there's no need to wrap it and protect it. And what's more, when we grow it, we know it. And when we know it, we're not going to be concerned if there's a blemish or a bump or a bruise because we've watched this become what will be, at the end of the day, us, because we are what we eat. So, you don't have a garden. I live in an apartment. I've got a tiny little concrete courtyard. Ba -ba -o. There's opportunity all around us. If you live high up in the clouds, have a look out for a community garden. What about the street verges? There's lots of opportunity. How about your neighbours? It could be an old couple up the street with, an, with a garden. Tap on the door, say g'day. Ask them if you can grow a bit there and share the produce with them. Family members, other friends, who's got a garden near you? If not, think about containers. You can grow anything in a container. Look at the resources around you and push your thinking. You can grow, so get growing. So growing up on the coastline of Australia, it's um, seemingly so clean and clear, but you start traveling around the world and you realize that pollution is actually a big problem globally. So as ocean lovers and surfers and divers, we decided that we wanted to do something about it. So instead of just walking past rubbish on the beach, we'd always pick it up. That's the idea behind Take 3. You simply take three pieces of rubbish with you when you leave the beach, waterway or anywhere and you've made a difference because by picking up that rubbish and putting it in a bin, you're removing that hazard, that risk from the environment. And that's the least we can do to save our innocent wildlife. Australians are fairly good recyclers and we've definitely seen that recycling practices and has recycling practices have improved in the last 10 years. But um, it, it becomes a problem when uh, people actually embrace recycling as the ultimate solution uh, to our waste problems and uh, see it as the end game. It's definitely a really good thing uh, to have a recycling bin full of well-sorted items as opposed to an equivalent bin full of uh, rubbish that's going to landfill. But uh, a far better alternative would be uh, to not have a bin full of recyclables in the first place and to actually reduce the amount of the overall volume of recyclable items and uh, single-use consumable items that we're sending uh, to recycling in the first place. I started by Nothing New Month because I was just very curious and confused as to why we we're being so wasteful with our precious finite resources and I thought Buy Nothing New Month was a really fantastic way to encourage more people to think about our stuff. Where does it come from? Who made it? What were their working conditions? Where does it go when we're done? And what are the alternatives that can be better for us, our people and our planet? I think people love Buy Nothing New Month because it gives them um, a chance just to stop and go, I actually don't need to have more stuff. So many messages out there in advertising tells us we have to buy this or buy that. It'll make us happier, it'll make us prettier. But Buy Nothing New Month just says you're fine as you are. Um, spend money on experiences with your family, that sort of stuff, not on getting more stuff. Getting involved is super simple if you just decide that you're going to buy nothing new for a month. So 
instead of going and shopping and buying something new, can you go to the op shop? Can you get it secondhand? Can you borrow it from a friend? Can you swap it? So Buy Nothing New Month really invites and encourages people to think about that and do something about it and look at the alternatives. In the UK, for example, in 2018, I think they're saying they'll run out of landfill. That means in four years' time, UK will have nowhere for its rubbish. We've really got to change the way that we're consuming on this planet for our sake and for our planet's sake. The decision has to take place before you've even left to go shopping. You've got to look at what other options are out there instead of just going to your big supermarkets. So look out for local farmers markets or bulk food stores where you can actually buy your produce in bulk. This way we can support local industry, we can phase out packaging altogether and you can take your own reusable containers and bags. By doing this we're making decisions that are better for the planet and better for you. Hi, I'm Shirley, I'm the Farmers Market Manager at Gasworks and this is Gypsy, she's the Assistant Manager and some of the great things about shopping at a farmers market, well you can bring your dog for a start and uh, as well as that you can buy all the fresh produce from farmers and producers around Victoria who come to the markets to sell their wares. You know it's fresh so it's going to last longer, it usually lasts weeks longer and uh, it's delicious. You can talk to the person who's grown it. You can bring your own bags, your own containers, fill them up, go home. You haven't wasted any other resources in your shopping experience. You've met some farmers, you've talked to some people in your community, you've sat down and enjoyed a fresh cooked breakfast perhaps with, uh, with equal-minded people and lots of people come to the market and shop that way and it's really the best way to shop because as well as supporting your local community, uh, you're supporting your rural friends who are the growers and producers who uh, really are our food bowl and it's the way of the future. For 10 years or more, farmers markets has, has been where I buy my food. The main reason for me is because I'm greedy and I love delicious things is that the quality of the produce is so much better than you can find almost anywhere else because you're buying direct from the farmer and there's something about I think there's something about eating food that tastes better that makes you feel better that has a kind of I don't know like a halo effect on your on your health and well-being there's also something about eating um, whole foods uh, that instinctively I think we know. Rather than eating something that's been processed within an inch of its life and, and by definition then has to have so many other things added to it or taken away from it. So I've just got back from the markets with my weekly shop. Now, some of my stuff has come wrapped in plastic, around about three, let's say four items of food. Now it's not ideal, when you extrapolate it out, it's around about 200 pieces of plastic a year I'm throwing into landfill. As I say, it's not ideal, but it's certainly not a thousand pieces of plastic. Now my point being is that we can all make a difference. You know, Australia's got a population of 23 million people, so we can actually be saving billions of pieces of plastic being thrown into landfill each year.